Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so excited. We've been pretty busy. We've been busy. Of course, keeping you in our prayers, thanking God for each and every one of you for allowing us to share with you in the Word of God. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 12.30 p.m., and we were able to tune back in on this Saturday for our Saturday morning in-depth Bible study. We have been kind of busy the past couple of weekends, but uh, what we did was is we took some time to pre-record our Bible study, and on yesterday... Uh, just listing out some things. We have some things coming up that we are so excited about. Uh, you've heard me talk about our life applications. Uh, we've been writing life applications since 2018. Uh, life applications is a extension. It's a portion of our College of Ministry and Mentoring programs. And those who have been enrolled uh, on Mondays, we do send out what we call life applications. Uh, some of the life applications are general and they go to uh, those who are enrolled in the class as a whole. And then there are times that uh, students receive a private individualized life application. What we did was is we took the public life applications that were sent to a uh, registered students per course and we combine those and we're actually uh, in the process of doing some final touches on what we're calling a life applications devotional that's right we are doing a life applications devotional and so we're so excited about that and we're going to share that with you just one of the things that uh you know we've been working on and I have to tell you that uh, on yesterday I said to myself girl you write too much when when I look at the process of writing and all that I have written it's a lot and so it's but to God be the glory I thank him for that uh, ministry gift that spiritual gift that he gave me I should say it's a spiritual gift to write to be able to write prophetically so be on the lookout for life applications the devotional and I think we're going to do a book promo give out a few free copies uh, so uh, stay tuned uh, we're going to do that um, possibly this month we're very early in the month and so uh, yeah I would like to do that uh, stay tuned and I'll let you know when you can receive a free copy of Life Applications Devotional. All right. What I want to talk about today, uh, there are so many things being said, so many uh, voices being heard and individuals asserting their voice, saying things, praying things utilizing the Word of God and I have to tell you that I, I've, I've heard some things and I hear some things and I'm listening and in my spirit is so vexed my spirit is vexed because what I'm hearing is individuals that are utilizing the Word as well as praying but it is actually a spirit of manipulation to control people and we want to be careful about that uh, we want to be careful about how we pray and the intent behind using God's Word the Holy Spirit draws us and so when we're praying about things let us allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us in our time of prayer. And not all prayer is meant for the hearing of others. 
go into your secret closet and pray. Uh, let us not be like individuals who utilize their role to be deceitful. And I wanted to take a look at a experience that uh, Jeremiah had. He is one that God utilized to talk about false prophets and things of that nature. But he had an experience himself. And over in Jeremiah 27, 16, it says, Also I spoke to the priests and to all this people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, hearken not to the words of your prophets that prophesy unto you, saying, Behold, the vessels of the Lord's house shall now shortly be brought again from Babylon, for they prophesy a lie unto you. And so we just, we have to be very, very careful about what we share publicly. Um, there was also a prophet that Jeremiah had an experience with where the Lord sent down a lying spirit and to see who would repeat what they heard. Um, we have to be careful. And I want to get to that particular scripture. This is um, I'm pausing because I'm telling you that my spirit is is really really vexed right now um, about what I've been hearing and um, this particular prophet actually slapped Jeremiah because of this very very thing now I'm going to look in Jeremiah, the 20th chapter. I was Googling it to look it up because I want to get to it precisely. It is Peshur. It's in Jeremiah, the 20th chapter. It says, Now Peshur, the son of Emir, the priest, who was also chief governor in the house of the Lord, heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. Then Peshur smote Jeremiah the prophet and put him in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin, which was by the house of the Lord. And it came to pass on the morrow that Peshur bought for Jeremiah out of the stocks. Then said Jeremiah unto him, The Lord had not called thy name Peshur, but Magoror Misabib. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I will make thee a terror to thyself and to all thy friends, and they shall fall by the sword of their enemies, and thine eyes shall behold it, and I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall carry them captive into Babylon, and shall slay them with the sword. So, Jeremiah is one that dealt with individuals who would give a word and the word was not from God and in his ministry he had to say whatever God would give him to say and oftentimes he called out falsehood he called out the false priest he called out the false prophets and the ministry of the prophet is a ministry of correction and order, rebuke and chastisement. What I want to say to all of us today is that whenever you receive a word from anybody, I don't care who it is, it, me, continue to pray about it. 
Seek the Lord about that word that you have heard. Go to the Lord in prayer. Oftentimes, the word that you hear is, in fact, confirmation for what God has already revealed to you. It's not a new word. It is him confirming a word. Oftentimes, we're so excited to get a word that we jump so easily and we're so excited and we move prematurely and I can only talk about me because if I talk about anybody else I'm going to get in trouble right two times I can recall early on I wasn't where I needed to be in Christ I wasn't two times I received a word I did not consult God. I knew it's what I wanted to do in my flesh. I believe it was something I should have done, but my timing wasn't right. And I move prematurely based off of what the person said. And both times I failed. Mm -hmm. Both times I came up on the losing end. Now, I will say this. Do I blame that individual? Absolutely not. Mm -mm. But I take full responsibility because I did not consult God myself. And I'm going to say this. Neither was I instructed to consult God. But I'm going to say to you that... see God's face whenever anybody gives you a word seek his face talk to God ask him what he says and when you get an answer okay not based off of what someone has said because sometimes we are giving a word out of our emotions. Especially, excuse me, this is for me staying up late yesterday. <laughs> Side note, I told my daughter that I was not going to work all day yesterday. And I ended up shutting my computer down about 9.51 last night. So, therefore, I'm a little sleepy. Please excuse me. All right. Now, oftentimes when we are familiar and close to something, we'll give a word based off of familiarity instead of allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. And I can say for myself, once again, this is a safe place for me, talking about me that way. No one can say, oh, she said this about you. No, I talk about myself. That's a safe place. Talk about yourself. I want to say well over a year ago, the Holy Spirit began to deal with me about praying based off of familiarity. Um, because my prayer was based off of my familiarity with a situation or a person. And I tell you that Romans 8.26 really became alive for me, giving me a revelation of Romans 8 26 I'm going to put that scripture on the screen I quote it quite often but it is something that we need here it's it's a scripture but it is also a prayer and so let us go to it because I want to quote it verbatim and I pray that it helps all of us when it comes to hearing and receiving a word because the truth of the matter is we don't know what to pray for over in Romans 8 26 it says likewise the spirit also helpeth our infirmities for we know not what we should pray for as we ought but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered so I don't know what to pray for and I acknowledge that 
and I asked the Holy Spirit to lead and guide me in prayer. Now, what I was experiencing, and this is well over a year ago, my prayers for individuals and situations was based off of I was familiar. And when the Holy Spirit was dealing with me about it is I wasn't uh, allowing the Holy Spirit to lead and guide me in prayer so that I could pray for God's will. And my prayer out of familiarity was getting in the way. Mm -hmm. And so I quote this scripture because I believe it by faith and I stand on it by faith. And I move in operation by faith concerning this scripture. I acknowledge that I don't know what to pray for. And I don't want to pray out of familiarity with you or anything else, situations, I, I, I don't. Or I could be praying about uh, something and that's not necessarily the area that God wants me to pray about. So in this, I am asking the Holy Spirit to lead and guide me in my time of prayer. And so what I'm saying to all of us today is to be careful about what we hear, what we allow individuals to speak to us concerning us. You pray. You have access to pray. You have the right to pray according to the scripture. You can humble yourself and pray and seek God's face. Turn from your wicked ways. Repent. We acknowledge God. We acknowledge God. He is our Father which is in heaven. And prayer is communication. Someone may say, well, he doesn't hear a sinner's prayer. We weren't always in righteousness. And he heard us, right? Mm -hmm. It's according to your faith. Now, the, um, the gifts that come are based off your faith and obedience. But he heard your cry. If you believe that he can hear you, he will. So, be careful. There are so many individuals online posting, doing videos, so, so much. There is a lot being said. But I believe where John wrote in Revelation, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the church. We have to know that it's God speaking to us. And whenever God says something to us, he's going to back it up with his already holy, written, inspired word. God, speaking to us now by the Holy Spirit, will always lead us back to what has been written. And once again, you will have a confirmation of what God has already said to you. Now, let's touch this right here. If someone gives you a word and it is foreign, and when I mean foreign, I'm talking about if it does not resonate with something that God has already said to you, I'm going to tell you, you can quote me on this. You can say, I heard Pastor Angel from the Balance of Life say this. I want you to go in prayer for yourself. I want you to seek God for yourself. I want, yeah, I do. Yes, 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 yes. If I give you a word, I'm going to tell you to continue to pray. See God's face. Because it's as he gives you the word, that's not the end of him speaking. It could be the beginning of him speaking, giving you a word, and you still need to pray to get a confirmation and get further instructions. It could be in the middle. He could have already given you the word. He is giving you a confirmation. But there is yet more to come. 
You see, one plants, one waters, but God gives the increase. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. So if I might be the first person to give your word, which means I'm the planter, he will send another to come and water that word, which will give you a confirmation. Could be somebody that you do not know um, that could give you the same word that you received at another place, at another, another setting. And, and the two people who are giving you the word, they don't know each other. They weren't there. Okay? So I'm always going to tell you to go back and pray. But remember this, one plants, one waters, but it is God that gives the increase. It is God that brings forth the manifestation, and it is according to your faith. But in this season, I need us to uh, become so, so very careful. Let's be careful. Let us become so very careful about what it is that we're hearing. What it is that we are allowing individuals to speak over us, concerning us. And not only that, because this is a two-fold thing, okay? The recipient has to be careful as well as the deliverer mm -hmm. that's right we have to be careful the deliverer has to be careful about what they say did they fear did they did they hear from god did they hear from god did they confirm you see when we hear from god I've learned that if I hear a word, have a dream, a vision, I've learned to ask him what he wants me to do with it. What you want me to do with what you allowed me to see and what you allowed me to hear? What am I supposed to do with this? Do you not know that that very question is actually a prayer request? Sometimes it's just for you to pray and for you to pray about it alone. Sometimes it's for you to connect with others and to pray about it. Sometimes it's meant for you to share, but who are you to share it with? Come on, come on, come on. But when the word is being used to manipulate, that's dangerous. And when it's being revealed to you that that's what that is, I need us to have a, to ask for the spirit of discernment. I need us to uh, make sure that we are asking the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us so that we don't fall up under that spirit of manipulation. And not only that, pray for the individual's deliverance, that they may realize that that's what they're doing. When we move carnally and out of our emotions, out of familiarity, we fall into that trap. No one is exempt. Let me talk about me again. Because years ago, I went through something very traumatic. And I prayed, Lord, let them feel how I feel. Let them see the hurt that they caused me. Do you not know that's a prayer of manipulation? To control? Because I only saw myself as a victim. But my prayer, God didn't answer that prayer. <laughs> he didn't answer that prayer. What God did was, was show me me. He showed me myself. That's what he did. And I found myself looking at my dirty self my filthy self and I found myself in a place of repenting no longer focusing on what the person did but my own filthy self so in fact my prayer was manipulation because I listen I was saying Lord uh, I, I, I believe in you um, they don't believe in you 
I'm trusting you like 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 my prayer had some kind of superiority. It didn't. My prayer was in the wrong place. And listen, I was in for a rude awakening. I was not happy about what he came back and revealed to me. I was not. <laughs> I was not. But I stopped praying that they felt the way that I felt. I stopped praying that let them experience what I experience let them see what they did that listen that was no longer my prayer i was listen i i had to get myself in the secret place of the most high and ask for forgiveness for what i did and do you think god stopped there no 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 god didn't stop there then i had to go and apologize to this person for what i did But this journey has taught me, and it's teaching me more and more every day. See, I listen with a spiritual ear. I add, listen, God, fine-tune my hearing so that I can hear. And what I've been hearing lately is I have been hearing individuals utilize the word, utilizing prayer, and it is a form of manipulation. Even utilizing the scripture. And I'm saying, Lord, ooh, God, we got to be careful. And see, here's, here's the understanding that I have. Because he allowed me to hear it. And he's given me a revelation about it. So it means I have to be the first partaker and make sure that I don't do it. Not only that, pray for those that I hear that are doing this. I'm praying that uh, that they are delivered, that they're no longer up under that spirit of manipulation and that we will rightly divide the word of truth. But I'm saying, oh God, when I hear stuff like this prophetically, it's like I, I was describing to someone recently, um, it's like taking your fingernails and running them across the chalkboard it is chaotic in my ear it is it is a it is a noise in my ear that i can hear spiritually and it vexes my spirit it really does and it puts me in a place of crying out to god that i'm saying lord deliver them from this because the word of God, when we hear it from the vessels, it should be of a sweet sound. It, it has authority. It is, it is breaking and destroying yokes. But when the word of God and the things of God are being used in a tainted, manipulative manner, it sounds like chaos. It is a horrifying noise. And that's what I've been hearing. And I want you to be led by God. I want you to go into prayer for yourself. Don't rely on somebody else to go into prayer for you. Stop going to people and say, I need you to pray for me. Pray for yourself. Now we can ask someone to... Uh, join us in prayer but if you're not going to pray don't you go and ask somebody else to pray for you you pray for yourself God is going to hear you don't let anybody tell you that God is not going to hear you yes he heard me one day when I was in my sin mm -hmm. and I said Lord help me he heard me when I cried out to the Lord in my day of trouble, when I was in despair, when I didn't know what to do, I wasn't always on the side. I wasn't always obedient. I didn't always walk by faith. But I cried unto the Lord. I knew how to pray. And so I'm telling you today, you can pray for yourself. You can say, Lord, I need help. That situation that you're in, it's, it, 
the Holy Spirit can draw you to Christ for a solution, for instructions, and for directions. We're going to talk about this more on tomorrow. Because I want you healed, delivered, and set free. Have a blessed day, everyone.